Roll up your sleeves, warm up your glue guns, and sharpen your scissors. It's time for a crafting showdown like you've never seen before. Our three contestants put their wits, skills, and crafting creativity against each other as the clock runs down. Kathy's kids are all out of the house, which leaves her lots of time to craft. Darlene is a paper crafter who takes as much joy in giving her creations away as she does making them. Rebecca is an all-around crafter who sews, knits, scrapbooks, and recycles objects into art. So here's how it works. Our three contestants race against the clock to create a masterpiece using only supplies found here in our studio, what they've been able to grab on their shopping spree, and their mystery items. Once the clock runs down, time's up, and we'll see whose project measures up. I think she's bitten off a little more than she can chew. Falls flat, and who becomes the craft master? boxes in front of you contain the theme for your project and the items that you must incorporate in some way. Once you open the boxes, it's time to get shopping. Are you guys ready? Yeah! yeah. Open them up! Alright, go. Today's gift box items include a Martha Stewart Crafts seasonal paper pad, a bunny punch, and the theme is Easter entertaining. There's just two things in there. Just two. Paper and a punch. I can work with that. I had a couple ideas in my head but I wasn't sure exactly where I was going to put that rabbit. Now, it's time to get shopping. I had like three versions of my list. I tried to order it in the order of the store, and then I grouped the items by like number one, these are all close together, so that I could run through and get everything in. I had a plan, but with crafting, you just kind of have to go with the flow. Time's up, bring your carts to the register. I didn't have to leave anything behind, and I actually had $5 left. In the end, I had to give up some stuff, but, you know, I did my best. I hope you have a solid plan and everything you need, because the judges are watching. It's time to get crafting, and the clock starts now. I'm planning to make kind of a memory canvas where all my friends and family members who come to my Easter lunch can sign it and it'll have some kind of memory there that I can hang up in the future. I'm going to go ahead and take this canvas and alter it. Just kind of embellish it, throw some stuff on it and make it a hanging welcome sign. I'm so excited that they're getting right to it. They're punching away, they're really punching away. I was panicking. My styrofoam eggs, I could not figure out what to do with them because at first I thought I was going to fold up the paper and put it on with the glue, and then the glue didn't work. I tried pinning it, and then there were too many pins. Finally, Rebecca is like, Martha Stewart glue is really good. So I went and got that glue, and then I found some glitter. I'm like, I'll just pour the glitter on, and it worked. That's beautiful. Glitter in the eggs right in the center does make a nice focal point. I'm thinking, OK, my altered canvas, I'm going to mod podge my paper. And I started working with it, and it started bubbling up on me. And I'm like, oh my god, I forgot. You know, you kind of have to do a layer, let it dry, and layer again, and I didn't have that time. Today's judges are Michael's very own diva of glitter, Joe Pearson, Michael's creative director, painter and sculptor extraordinaire, Michael Duncan, and today's guest judge is the crafting guru from Martha Stewart Crafts, Alex Peruzzi. All right, ladies, it looks like you're hard at work, but boy, do I have a sweet surprise for you. Today's wild card item is a kid's candy making kit. Now you must incorporate this in some way into your final project. Good luck. When she gave us the wild card and she said it was a candy making kit, I thought I cannot focus on that right now. And I'm just gonna have to think about it later. Rebecca was really making me panic because she'd be like, we have 30 minutes. You got 34 minutes, girl. Oh, but relax, it's gonna be fine. She's crazy. <laughs> I really talked to her, not to stress her out, but to make her relax. Same time, I'm sizing up what they're doing. I mean, this is competition. Now, I wasn't trying to throw them off their game, but if they did, well, that kind of happens. When I got into crafting, I started with scrapbooking. Very basic. And from there, it kind of evolved. You incorporate everything that you learn from scrapbooking into doing other things. Over time, you know, you kind of learn new techniques, just becoming more knowledgeable. It is an outlet for me. 
My mom was a crafter, and we didn't have a lot of money, so my mom was the kind of person that she could look at something in the store and come home and whip it up. She's the one that inspired me. It's kind of in our blood. Some people like to have a glass of wine, some people like to have a beer. I like to craft. Crafters, you have 15 minutes to complete your projects. I am a technical person. I knew coming into this that this was gonna be very stressful for me, so I didn't sleep at all last night. <laughs> really, really hard to work under that pressure to make it presentable. That was hard. Time's up and tools down. It's time to tell the judges all about your projects. This is a memory frame that all your guests can sign when they come to your Easter luncheon. Now, I use the rabbit punch in different parts of this frame. I also use the papers for the background and also for the scalps on the side. The wild card is the candy mold and I put it right in the middle so it could be the focal part of this beautiful frame. I made this piece of Easter home decor that can either hang from the ceiling or sit on a table. I used my rabbit punch to punch out the paper and wrap it around the eggs. My wild card, I found a funky piece of plastic that kind of looked like a fence, so I just propped it under my bird. I've made an altar canvas to welcome your Easter guests. I used the rabbit punch as an embellishment, the paper that was in the pack as a backdrop, added additional embellishments. I used my wild card item as a prop for my flower and my W wrapped it in a ribbon. Thank you. It's now time for the judges to deliberate. So who's our craft master? Well, you know, Rebecca, that wild card in the middle there, you know, she really kind of made it work. She used it as um, a pedestal for her additional bug, and it actually looks nice. I actually think that if she had used a different sheet of paper that wasn't so white, it would have been a yeah. little bit easier to in get that center, focal point. In the center, yeah. in the center, yeah. I agree, it needs more color. What about Kathy's? Well, I think the composition looks nice. I was really worried about the beginning. It was getting a little busy, but she pulled it together nicely. I really like that she added that handle, so it looks like a basket. I was really looking forward to seeing what the, the painting technique was gonna be underneath, and then she wound up covering it all. I wish that she had shown a little bit more of that. What do we think of Darlene's? Well, of course it has glitter on it, so I love it. I like that it's a 3D piece that so you can see all the way around, makes a nice centerpiece. She really understood the project, which was about Easter entertaining, so she really got that, that you're gonna have that on the center of your table. Well, judges, have we made our decision? I Is think that? we have one. Yes. Well, it was hard, but the judges have come to a decision. Crafters, this was a really tough decision. They were all great projects in the end, but there can only be one craft master and that is Darlene. I'm just glad I did this. You know, sometimes you just gotta go out there, do something different, and have some fun. Darlene, you are the craft master. Surprised and very happy. <laughs>